Oh, and I'll go back to, actually I want to go, we've been through that, so I'll start there. All right, so looking again at your purpose level statement, your purpose statement and the program aims and objectives. So, and we've said this a thousand times, but we just reiterate again, it must relate to the nature and type of your HEQS qualification, HEQSF qualification. Okay, the aims and objectives and the academic rationale, all that stuff to put in the rationale and justification. You do need a purpose statement, because in one of the templates, and I'm not going to tell you which one, you have to write a purpose statement. It doesn't have to be just one sentence. It can be a short paragraph, but a short paragraph, not half a page. So it can be two or three sentences, but try and keep it short and try and make sure you encapsulate all these issues. So it must be aligned to the qualification type, the nature and characteristics of the qualification, and informed by your situation analysis, your stakeholder engagement, and your benchmarking. And this must also now be pulled through into your exit level outcomes. So that these have all got to align, got to be aligned. What are exit level outcomes? Okay, and associated assessment criteria, they're broad statements aimed at the program level. We're not talking about subjects now, we're looking at your program about what students are expected to know, understand, and be able to do, okay, and become. So it's a knowing, doing, and being. So it's broad statements about the knowing, doing, and being. So if we think about the nature of the postgraduate diploma again then, it's either multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary. Think of your knowledge tree. Somebody there very explicitly had a whole lot of things about multidisciplinarity, disciplinarity, transdisciplinarity. Um, it's going to serve to strengthen and deepen students' knowledge, okay? But its primary purpose is to enable working professionals to undertake advanced reflection and development. So now think about this in terms of your teaching and learning strategy, okay? There's not just chunks of knowledge that, are, that the students are going to engage with they are going to have to reflect and they're going to have to develop their knowledge by means of a systematic survey of current thinking, practice and research methods. So again, it's starting to align to research in an area of specialization. So they will require a high level of theoretical engagement and intellectual independence, but also be able to relate that knowledge to a range of contexts. So very much looking at that four quadrant Legitimation code theory, um, slide that Marianne was showing us, theoretical, but also contextual, okay? Very much a, pro a professional type of qualification in quadrant one, two, three, four. So sustained research is not required, but it may include conducting and reporting research and supervision. Well, they will definitely need to do some research. So that has got to come into your purpose statement. The nature of the qualification, advancing, deepening knowledge, reflection, okay? So, what components should your purpose statement contain? Well, it should relate to the nature and purpose of the qualification, as I said, and looking again at the SACWA level descriptors for a level 8 of its postgraduate diploma, high certificate is level 6, level 5. Um, advanced diploma level seven, so I'll make sure that you know where your level is and look at those level descriptors. It must obviously relate to the field of study and the combination of the different forms of knowledge, as Marianne has so eloquently displayed today. So the, just the theoretical, the practical, the professional, tr generic transferable. So all of those components should be there. It should describe the context of the qualification and what it intends to, to achieve in the national, professional, and career context. Remember, when we talked about our situation analysis, we talked about those four components, the work component, the disciplinary component, the institutional component, the students' component, the, the, where they're coming from, contextual components. So it must actually describe that context. It should capture what the qualifying learner will know and be able to do at the end, which is your exit level outcomes, uh, and therefore should relate to the exit level outcomes, and it should, if necessary, integrate professional body requirements. So those should be there somewhere as well. You're not just going to pull the statement from your professional body requirements and plant that into your purpose statement, because those, that's a very, very generic, broad statement. It's not speaking to your context of this particular program that you're running, this particular qualification. We must remember that, that always the professional statements, the professional outcomes, the professional uh, assessment criteria, whatever they call them, 
um, are always generic to the field and not specific to the context of your qualification. You then have to contextualize them differently. So that's your purpose level statement. This is where it all was, you kind of, you, we're moving backwards, but it's integrating everything we've done so far. And that's why a purpose statement is difficult to write at the beginning because you haven't been through this process yet. All right, now how do we get to the dreaded writing? Yes, Thomas. Yeah, I just had a question about if your qualification is divided into streams, like yes. specialization areas that yes. have quite different, almost like different purposes to your training then, but obviously you have to submit one purpose statement. Yes. So do you just make it a little bit generic so that it, or can you, can you say, Main purpose and then like yeah. yes. purpose for yeah. the two. Yes, you should have that. Yes, that one. absolutely. So you should definitely mention your specializations and yeah. why you have those specializations yeah. and where that's going, to, how that's going to benefit your your learners. So where are they going to benefit? What is what is the nature of the context that requires you to do this? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that from a program design perspective, please just note that if you will be, you will have different electives. Okay, and that might be even a stream with elective subjects within the stream going from a course of the your curriculum. That the credit value that you assign to the different streams must be identical. So you can't have, let's say, if you have a postgraduate diploma, I'm just going to make it up, okay? Let's say 50% is the whole subjects, and that's common, everybody does the same. And then you have 60 credits assigned to different streams. And let's say within stream one, you might have two subjects and another one, you might have three. That the credit value of those streams must then every time total up to the same. So if you decide that it must be 60, then it must be 60 for all of them. Or if it's 70, it must be 70 for all of them. So just remember, if you are, oh, exceed the 120, then that will also be <coughs> Okay, but that's a common mistake that people yes. make. I've recently had to correct one in another department saying you can't do that. The credit value of the streams must be the same. Okay, any other questions at this point? Just, just also, you know, to something that Aleta mentioned a little bit earlier during tea break. And you know, saying you know what what part of the template does do we go? Where does it fit into the template? And this is the reason why we didn't start with the templates, because if you think about it, your templates are little compartments, and generally what people do is oh, what do I put in this compartment? Whereas what we're developing here is a whole concept, which will then enable you to go back and draw on the pieces of knowledge that you've been working on and actually populate them now in a far more coherent way than you would have been able to otherwise. Otherwise, we fixate on the little blockies and we just put them in. It doesn't actually help us in developing our programs at all. Okay, so that's why we've been doing it this way around. Okay, so if we now think about how we're going to express what this program is about, what this qualification is about in exit level outcomes. In other words, what will our students need to know, do and be by the end of the program? They generally, so the general sort of structure and content of exit level outcomes is that they must encapsulate the complexity of knowledge and understanding. So they're not just broad generic statements. There are broad statements, but they are specific to your qualification. All right. So again, if you look at, at, at let's say, engineering uh, exit level outcomes, you will have engineering exit level outcomes for engineering at level 8, at the postgraduate diploma level, let's say, or a bachelor's level. How many fields of engineering are there? Huh? I mean, you've got your electrical, you've got your civil, you've got your mechanical. The same exit level outcomes apply as a broad blanket to all of those. So you obviously have to take those from your professional bodies and contextualize and make them far more specific to your program. Okay. So they must speak to the complexity of knowledge and understanding within your qualification. They must represent a standard of cognitive skills. So they must, you know, it's a level eight qualification, it's the PG tip, 
At level 8, what kind of standard of cognitive skills are required of your students? Right. To what? The, the, as it, it, let's think of a research component, for instance. That they're not going to be expected to write a thesis. They're going to be expected to write a research report to that standard. A thesis is a much higher standard, or a dissertation is a much higher standard. So what's standard? Okay. It must encapsulate... They must encapsulate the key or transferable skills, so the more generic stuff, the graded attributes, all right? or so things around communication, things around academic writing, those should be in there. Sorry? Research methodology. Research methodology. They also speak to the expected responsibility of the student, so the student should be able to be, learn independently. They should be independent learners. But then, again, be specific as to how independent. They're not going to... It's not all self-study. And again, your program design will show that. There'll be, your program design will say how, mu how much of the time is being spent in lectures, how much is being spent in tutorials, how much is spent in group work, okay, supported work. So these are clearly not students who are going to work entirely on their own in an online course. So you need to define that very carefully. How autonomous is a student going to be? So again, doing some research, but some reported research. So, sorry, supported research. So will you be providing them with a lot of the resources or will they be expected to go and get all those resources themselves? So think about that level. It's very, 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 very crucial in writing the books of level outcomes and the amount of guidance required by the students. Okay? So those are just thoughts to, those are just the way of structuring your exit level outcomes. So if one is going to write them as, as a statement, and I'm sure you all know this by now, and it's boring, but you always start with a verb. And because we are dealing with outcomes-based or out, outcomes-based constructive alignment, outcomes-based learning, okay? We're not looking at outcomes-based in tiny, tiny minutiae, but we need to make sure that we have an outcome at the end of our learning programs. So what should the students learn. What, what are the outputs of this learning? Okay, They're always framed in terms of learning, hence the verb. So you start with the verb, which is the action, and then your subject content, cognitive skills, whatever it is, the what, and then the nature, the context, the, 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 the how, and the where. So, at the, for example, at the end of this program, graduates will be able to render and coordinate your verbs. You can have more than one verb. You can have several verbs. Okay, What Will they need to render and coordinate comprehensive midwifery and neonatal care? Okay, in what context? In a variety of healthcare settings. This is a level eight qualification. So not just one setting, okay, but a variety of healthcare settings in order to promote health outcomes. So not just perform the procedures, but to be able to take that information and use it in another context to promote healthcare. So you can see here, if you look very carefully, how this is related to a level 8 qualification. Yes, is, Aleta. Is there a, a minimum number of exit-level outcomes that they need? Outcome they usually, they say bet, between 3 and 8. I think 3 is too little. I mean, 8 is, a, is about a ballpark figure. Some people but this they, is now the exit-level outcome for the whole qualification. For the whole not qualification. For the specific subject. No, it cuts across your subjects. And this is the difficult thing. And that's why it's a good. That's why we start with the broad knowledge areas rather than saying, okay, we've now designed your program, you've got your subject, what are going to be the exit level outcomes? Because then what people do is they take one outcome per subject, whereas your exit level outcomes are cross cutting. Yeah. Very often a combination of subjects. Yes. Yeah. And very often what you'll yeah. find is that the, the theoretical. Uh, some of the theoretical knowledge bases are, are, are kind of encapsulated in, in, in like two or three of the X level outcomes, and then you might get more of the practical skills encapsulated in another two, and then some of the more generic skills in, a, in, in another two. So you can play it whichever way you like, um, but see how it pans out for you. But all of those, the, the knowledge, the skills, and the attitudes, the behaviors must all be there. So the the cognitive, the psychomotor, the effective must all be there in the exit level outcomes in some way or another. Yes, Thomas? Okay, again, coming back to the issue of having streams, can you have stream-specific exit level outcomes? 
what you could do is you could have yeah you can what you could do is you have your broad exit level outcomes mm -hmm. and then say specifically for the different streams yeah. you probably label the stream label the stream and yes. then your outcomes to each stream and you probably only have a couple of outcomes for each of those specializations yeah. one or yeah. two and the purpose statement just needs to be clear stating mm -hmm. that if there is a choice between the streams or are there combinations of streams mm -hmm. that people need to take so mm -hmm. you need to just in a purpose statement make that quite clear mm -hmm. as well how how the streams relate to the food and your your specialization streams with the the exegetical outcome they would, would largely be around the the concepts of the disciplinary knowledge the theoretical knowledge because your your other attributes would be more cross-cutting I would imagine yeah any other questions okay so let's then have a look at so if that's your broad learning learning outcome. your broad learning outcome is a very broad statement now we come to the dreaded even more dreaded associated assessment criteria assessment criteria are merely statements that describe the learning outcome of greater precision. So it breaks it down into slightly smaller components. Uh, Marianne, this is the one. Yeah, that's my one. That's what I have these two. Yeah. That's it. Um, breaks it down into smaller components with more precision, and it specifies the quality and the standard of performance. All right? To show that they've reached the particular threshold. So a lot of people will talk about problem solving. A lot of your programs have problem solving. Students will be able to problem solve. What do you mean by problem solving? Is it going to be simple problem solving? Is it going to be a kind of a, a multi 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 component problem that they will get? Or is it going to be a highly complex problem? Specify what sort of problem it's going to be. Okay? Don't just say problem solving. Um, when you're talking about the, the assessment criteria in particular, look at the level descriptors, the cognitive effectiveness item, and see what level those are. And remember that your postgraduate diploma is aimed at the development of research skills and, and the capacities of formulation, conceptualization, and reflection. So these should appear in your assessment criteria, the ideas of formulation, conceptualizing, and, and reflecting. Okay, You're going into a deeper knowledge um, developments with these students. So the assessment criteria, if you take a broad learning outcome, let's say something like at the end of the program, render and coordinate comprehensive midwifery and neonatal healthcare. All right, your assessment criteria then might specify a bit more precisely what healthcare settings, okay? They might mention more specifically what health outcomes need to be promoted. Mm -hmm. And they might break down into a little bit more detail what we mean by comprehensive midwifery or neonatal healthcare. It might specify particular parameters. So in other words, it wouldn't be the whole of midwifery. It might be certain aspects of midwifery. It might be certain aspects of, of neonatal healthcare. And your assessment criteria would flag that. Okay. Um, so it, it's, a, it's the smaller components that really situate this, this program at your level. So if we are going to be writing learning outcomes and assessment criteria, it's always useful to go to Bloom or Solo or a whole bunch of them, okay, to look at these verbs. Now, I came across this very nice diagram in Light and Culkin's, Light, Cox and Culkin's, Learning and Teaching the Higher Education Reflective Professional. Um, and I think it, it encapsulates, it brings all, it brings bigs and solo together. You're all familiar with, with, with sorry, with blooms and, and taxonomy and bigs, solo? Okay. So if you look at, if you look at where you are at a level eight qualification, we would be m moving more from the, your quanti we, quantitative phase, if you like, if you look at the, if you look at the um, arrow on the top, you're moving very much from the basic knowledge, building blocks knowledge on the quantitative phase, things you can measure very easily, students, um, simple knowledge, just learning knowledge, repetitive items of knowledge, okay? Um, so our learning outcomes are very much kind of rather simple at, a, at, a, at an early age, at school age, they're learning, they, they're becoming familiar with, with knowledge areas, they're learning things, very basic knowledge. 
then you put it together. At us, at when you get to postgraduate diploma, obviously there's more dealing at a much more complex level where they're dealing with much more complex knowledge and putting together more complex ways. So if you think about where you want your postgraduate diploma together and how you're going to write these learning outcomes, you're not going to use the sorts of verbs that one would find in a unistructural way of learning, where you are just simply identifying things, doing simple procedures. You're not recalling information so much. Um, students might, you might require students to perhaps list things or describe things or retrieve things within your subject, but you wouldn't put this as an exit level outcome. Okay? So for exit level outcomes, you definitely would need to start working from the multi-structural across to the relational, across to the extended abstract kind of concepts, ways of learning. Right? So if you think of your students um, doing a complex pro problem solving exercise. They could do it perhaps at a multi-structural level where it's kind of just explaining what's happening in the problem or you could make it much more complex where students now have to look at the relationship of the problem. Okay, what are the relations within the problem? So are they comparing, contrasting? Are they, are they analyzing? Are they applying? Okay, so Bloom's taxonomy talks about remembering, understanding, and then we move into the relational, which is about applying and analyzing. And as we become far more complex, into the extended abstract, which is where your students really need to start being. They need to start working in this extended abstract zone of evaluating and creating because they are going to be moving into a master's. For those of you who've got a progression route into the master's, you'll want them to be able to do that. So the evaluating, creating, the extended abstract allows that transition into the masters. It won't be heavily in the extended abstract, okay? But you will, they will need to start learning in the extended abstract. Yes. Yeah, just for um, PE just now, something like a B degree, a B yes. degree. Yes. Um, that, so that would be your exit level, would be in Sosa NQSA, so it's yes. more towards the complex side of things. Yes. The first and the second year wouldn't be. Would be more you know, multi-structural. You know, it depends how it depends the it depends on the complexity of the areas that they're working with in the first place. There's no reason why students, in fact, can't work at the at the in the extended abstract domains with simple knowledge. So children, in fact, I mean, when when students are, when when children at the age of two are using blocks, building blocks. When they're starting to put different shaped building blocks placed into different shaped holes, they're already building concepts. They're already starting to do to learn in the extended abstract zone, but at that level, okay, with those tools. So obviously, the higher, the, the more advanced you become, the ideas that you'll be using in the extended abstract zone will be more comp will be more abstract and complex themselves. But there's no reason why students in first year or on a diploma level can't also be working in the extended abstract zone, but with simpler ideas, with simpler concepts. So learning to do those things, but at a simpler level. So it doesn't really go just about the verbs. Because you know, what, what a lot of people do, especially when you say text, yes. is they will say, oh, well, this is first year and five or six yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And then go and do the taxonomy and say, well, Describe yeah. it because you can't have a evaluating first year. No, 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 mm -hmm. no. All those verbs should be used across all the years, but they should they they've become more and more complex in the way that they're used. Okay. Because our brains work like that anyway. Our brains integrate all of these ways of learning automatically. We're integrating ideas all the time. We're working with evaluating and comparing all the time. Driving a car, we're evaluating, we're comparing, we're analyzing, we're synthesizing information all the time. Our brains are doing it almost unconsciously. There's absolutely no reason why we can't in our programs and why we shouldn't be. In fact, we should be. Okay? But it's how you express it in the exit level outcome that's important. So you would use those verbs from the relational to the extended abstract more than you would use, let's say, the multi-structural verbs. Okay? More than things like um, paraphrase, classify, explain, that you would expect more to, you would have a heavy preponderance of these verbs of the multi-structural at a lower level, but you would certainly have some of the others mm -hmm. as well. Whereas now at your PG dip level, you're moving far more to the relational and into the extended abstract. But okay. at the same time, if you're not 
you're working with a very difficult subject, yes. complex idea, yes. it could then still use the simpler verbs. Absolutely. Higher levels. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You see, you should never just look at the verb without looking at the word verb in relation to yes. the rest of the sentence that follows. Yes. It's actually the rest of the sentence that shows the complexity more than sometimes what is in the verb itself. So the list, the, the verb directs the activity, yeah. but it's the it's 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 the content of the activity mm -hmm. that. Is what at is, 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 is at the appropriate level. Okay. So we could have rather we could have simple um, theorizations, generalizations, reflecting and hypothesizing. I mean, you could have you could have you could have children actually doing this in terms of riding a bicycle. Okay. So what are the general principles about riding a bicycle? What kind of theories would there be around riding a bicycle? You have simple mm -hmm. physics. Okay. What sort of what would you how 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 could you reflect on riding a bicycle? Okay. What hypotheses could you come up around riding a bicycle? So it could be done even at that very simple level, but obviously you're working at a much more complex level than that. Integrating different forms of knowledge, and in fact, you'd be you'd be you'd be integrating at this level your cognitive, your psychomotor, and your affective domain. So that so you're talking about applied knowledge. You're talking about research, and you're talking about applying knowledge to complex situations. But it's just it's just a simple the verbs are useful as as a kind of a starter motor to get you going on the on the sentence. Okay? What do we need students to do here? We need students to actually analyze ideas and then synthesize them into something. Okay, what are they going to analyze? What what do we want the product to be? What are they going to synthesize? How how are they going to do it? What are what is the content that they're going to be working on in order to do this? Are they going to be doing this in teams or are they going to be doing this alone? If they're working in teams, then you're looking at uh, much more complex forms of the being, the professional, okay, working in teams in order to, okay? So think about that. It's, it's all of those other aspects that you bring in that take it into that very much extended abstract or level 8 or level 9 or level 10 zone, okay? So this is quite a nice little diagram just to help you situate your, the way you write your exit level outcomes. So this is not, I, I, I thought over and over again, should I include this or should I not? But I think it just gives a, it, if one thinks of, of this in terms of assessment, it, we're not going to even look at, at, at what, what, what Biggs calls the pre-structural because that's where students, it's useful in a, in a rubric where students have perhaps missed the point, but a unistructural, uh, the unistructural zone, they identify and doing this procedure. So an example of a question, let's say, in your assessment would be something like, what is the gram staining procedure for identifying gram positive, gram negative bacteria? Sorry, I'm, oh, it's a long time since I've done that, so I may not have phrased it appropriately. But, you know, something, a simple procedure. And it's focusing, the point is that it's focusing only on one relevant concept. So the unistructural, one concept. Multistructural, now you're starting to work with several concepts. So the verbs like enumerate, describe, list, combine, do algorithms. So perhaps identify major powers in World War I and outline key foreign policy associated with these, with each of those. So it's not just identify, but it's explain, summarize. So it's, it's showing that there's a link. It's focusing on more than one issue, but there may be a disorganized collection. So you're talking more about a collection of items, so things that are not being linked together, where those integration is not happening. At a multi at a relational level, we're now starting to look at comparing, contrasting, drawing comparisons, so the relationship between, starting to integrate concepts, explain, analyze, relate, apply. So, for example, explain how the government's nutritional requirements regarding food groups have changed over time. So explain. And discuss how different social groups have been affected by these changes. So very much an application of your knowledge. Okay. Now, very unspecified, just social groups that could have obviously been far more clearly explained and then defined, but that's fine just as an example. Uh, and the point is that it shows an understanding and it applies or uses a concept which integrates a collection of issues. So if you're using this in your marking rubric, you would say one of your criteria would be shows understanding or uh, and, and applies or uses concepts which integrate a number of different issues. Okay. 
you will extend it abstract, your verbs theorize, generalize, synthesize, reflect, etc. So design, not identify, not explain, but design an outreach program that will help educate a diverse community about the government's new nutritional guidelines. That's taken very much into that next zone of complex ideas being integrated in a very complex way into a particular context. So that is what that is the, the, the one thing that you need to always remember is your context drives everything, which is why we put so much emphasis on the situational analysis, on that benchmarking, because your context drives your exit level outcomes always. Okay, even at this complex level. So let's just look at I found this I was looking at looking for examples of, of an exit level outcome that can kind of just showcase what I've been trying to explain here. So this postgraduate diploma in literacy, I don't know if it's an old qualification, I couldn't find a date attached to it. But I think it was probably I, I think it is oldish, so it may not apply any longer, but it's an example nevertheless. So let's just take an exit level outcome. So this is an exit level outcome for a postgraduate diploma, not a subject level outcome. Apply principles of evidence-based care to ensure quality of midwifery and neonatal health care. You can see that evidence-based, so we're definitely focusing, we're definitely facing towards the research. Huh? Assessment criteria. Promote quality of patient care and safety of midwifery and neonatal care by implementing evidence-based practice. That's not a very good first assessment criteria. It's almost a repetition of the learning outcome. But I left it in because I thought, have a look at that and see, this actually isn't a very helpful assessment criterion. The only thing that's different, it's talking about promoting, which takes it into a slightly different zone. So maybe we could leave it in. I would be a little bit, I'd say, look, it's a bit iffy, but we leave it for, for that. We leave it like that for now. The second one is much more useful. Use systematic reviews to improve client experience and outcomes. Okay. So, systematic reviews to improve, improve client experience and outcomes. If, so, this is evidence-based. This, this now is, if you like, explaining what this evidence base is. Taking it into greater detail. 1.3. Perform quality audits aimed at improving patient services at predetermined times. Now, this is an interesting one, but again, we're talking about where is this um, evidence based? Where is this evidence coming from? Again, looking at your research, quality audits at predetermined time. So, in other words, the student is not being tasked to go out there and do quality audits, but that within the structure of the system, at certain times they will be required to go and monitor, do little mini audits. So it's circumscribed. So for level eight, that's great. The student has to be to some degree autonomous and independent. But it's, they're being held in that space. It's being defined. It's a defined space. Now, critique, develop, and implement clinical standards for midwifery and neonatal health care. So coming out of this evidence base, this, this, this data that they're collecting from this evidence, they now need to apply this for critiquing, developing, and implementing clinical standards. So they're presuming there will be some clinical standards. They need to critique those and develop improve on them and implement them, new ones, okay? And then the final one would be continuously monitor patient outcomes. So again, monitoring patient outcomes, evidence-based care. Including quality patient care and safety. So we're defining here the safety aspect as well. So do you see how the assessment criteria have broken that down into more manageable chunks? So that the student, when they read those learning outcomes, get a really good sense of what is going to be required of them. And remember that your what what drives your students' learning is always the assessment. The assessment criteria spell out not exactly what they're going to be tested on or how they're going to be tested on, whether it's an exam or whatever, but it does explain very carefully what they will need to know and do and be. Yes, I, Alexa. May I ask, if you read such a subject discussion with, with these assessment criteria, and um, you look at that slide of my line earlier of the yes. four, four quadrants, will that now put you in that bottom right one? 
Mm -hmm. Again, it draw, these draw are these draw across all four quadrants. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but what is that? Would you more in, in that PNC data quadrant? You would you you should have a preponderance in in the fourth quadrant, but you will obviously be using drawing on theory. On theory, as opposed with practical. Uh, remember earlier it was more there and here. But That's will right. this will this not bring you more here? Your, your, your exit level outcomes and your assessment criteria should definitely, will definitely specify more on which quadrant you are. Yeah, but especially with, with, with these. Yes. This this I, I haven't mapped these. I mean, this is just an example that no, I, I, I yeah. know, but I yes. was, I'm just interested, I'm just curious to know yes. where will this bring us? Will it still be there and a bit here, or will it bring us here where you want to be? You should try and aim for being in the in the fourth quadrant, no, 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 the bottom, the bottom yeah. right one. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult to do that. It's you were mapping like that from an isolation is rigid, so you only yeah. need yeah. to have the core spread. Yeah. You can't just you can't just go from the exit level, level outcome. Yeah. yeah. The exit yeah. level outcomes are too broad in the system. You've got to actually yeah. work at a touch of the yeah. 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 So it's a very time consuming exercise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so this so this yeah. exit level outcome deals particularly with quality of care. Okay. So there were other ones will be dealing with other aspects of neonatal and um, and midwifery, okay. Huh? But just looking, I will try to let me and let me just have a look at how. Let's see how these solo criteria would apply if we're looking at your at your quadrants. So we can see that the first assessment criteria is very much talking about relational ways of learning. Okay. So what kind of outcome of learning will there be? Will it be quite relational? So they have to apply knowledge in, in a particular way in a particular context. For 1.2, it's also relational. They have to analyze and apply. They have to they have to do systematic reviews. They have to analyze them. They don't just do them and then leave them in a pile. They've got to use them to improve client experience. So they've got to apply those. And then they're moving into the extended abstract by actually improving on something. Okay, so they've got to take that then and apply it to a new situation, which is your extended abstract. Similarly for 1.3, well, some, not similarly, 1.3 then starts off with at a very multi-structural level. So carrying out a procedure, collecting evidence, so it's, it's predetermined procedures that they'll be needing to do within a predetermined time. So kind of quite multi-structural, but not just left at that point. They then take that and they again analyze it. So it's taken, it's taken, so you're starting with your multi-structural kind of way of of learning and then you're but you're applying it so you move it into the analytical field again. For right. 1.4, relational, analyzing and applying, and then you'll extend the abstract evaluating and creating. So we can see we're working at they, they, they've got the mix of different forms of learning quite neatly in, in I think this 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 um, exit level outcome and assessment criteria. Whereas number 1.5 is more multi-structural. Again, so you're know, performing a procedure, but they're going to be using it for something. So you could analyze your exit level outcomes in a way, in, in the same sort of way. It's quite a helpful way of seeing, you know, am I cap capturing the sort of complexity that I would want at this level? You could map it in this way. So that's just a tip. Okay, we are out of time. What I need you to do for next session, which is, and we've got a whole month, so we've got four weeks, alright? <laughs> <laughs> 22nd of May, because we've got the 1st of May as a public holiday and the 8th of May we've, we've